welcome back. So here's where we left off last time. We have our board. Uh, when I hit play, it can be filled with pieces, and the pieces are there so that there's not already a match. So already we've got quite a bit of the, the hard stuff already done. So now what we want to do is we want to be able to detect uh, when we touch or click on the screen and then make a swipe and have it detect if that piece that we touched should move left or right or up or down. And we're just going to do the movement today. We'll detect matches next time, uh, and then after we detect matches, we'll destroy pieces, collapse columns, make new pieces. And then that's the general gist of the gameplay for a game like this. We'll add more to it, of course, but that's kind of, we're already pretty close into it, or pretty far into it. So the main idea that we want to do here is when we touch the screen or click on it, we want to register what the XY pixel position is. And then we're going to take that XY pixel position and we're going to translate it to a grid position. Now, when the player moves their finger, we're going to take that XY position when they let off and we're going to compare it to the first position. And based on the comparison between those two, we can tell if they mean to swap with one to the right, swap with one to the left, up or down. And so that's the main idea is we're taking these pixel coordinates, we're going to turn it into a grid coordinate so that we know which piece we want to use. And then we're going to take the pixel coordinate when you let go, and we're going to use the difference between those two to tell if the user meant for it to go left, right, up, or down. All right, let's dive into this. So I'm in my game window piece here. So if you open up your game window scene, and then go to your grid object, click on the script, and open this up. So what I want to do here is I want to be able to tell uh, where those two touches were. So up here in my variables, I'm going to make some more. And let me actually make this just a little bit more organized. I'm going to label my variables here. So up above possible pieces, I'm going to put a pound sign and say that this is the piece array. Just to label it for others who might need to use this and myself, if I come back to this after not using it for like a week or two, I might not know what's going on. This is going to be the current pieces in the scene. And then I'm going to make another one here. And I'm going to call this touch variables. So the first one is going to be var first touch. And again, because I'm so used to programming in other languages, I'm going to initialize this to be vector2, 0, 0. And I'm going to make another one. I'm going to call this var final touch or touch released or whatever. And this is vector2, 0, 0. All right. So in the very first episode, second episode, in our project settings, in our input map, we added ui underscore touch and that's because it's the left button. And Godot is going to treat anything that you're using a left button as by default as a single touch. If you want to do multi-touch, you have to do something different, but this is what we're going to do. So um, in our functions here, uh, what I want to do is I want to make a new function that I'm going to call touch input. So function touch input, and this doesn't take any arguments. And what this is going to do is going to read to see if the user has touched or clicked on the screen. So we're going to say if input.is, and we want to do action just pressed, which means it only registers once when it first occurs. And the action we're looking for is UI underscore touch. So what we're going to do then is we're going to take our first touch is equal to, and what we're going to set it equal to is wherever the mouse currently is on the screen, which is going to be the same for a touch screen, believe it or not. So we're going to do uh, get global mouse position. All right. Next, we're going to say if input dot is action just pressed, or actually not just pressed, just released. And the action is going to be UI underscore touch. Oops, I keep using semicolons when I should use colons. Then we're going to say final touch 
is equal to get global mass position. All right, so what that's going to do is it's going to um, register where we touch the screen and where we let off the screen. Now, what we want to do next is we want to be able to tell from that first touch what the grid position of the piece that we touched was. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say um, create a little variable here. I'll call this variable grid position is equal to. And I'm going to have to convert my pixel coordinates to my grid coordinates. So it's kind of the opposite of what we were doing up here. So let me actually comment this out really quickly while I make another little helper function. So this helper function that we made two times ago converts a grid coordinate to a pixel coordinate and we used it to be able to place the pieces in the scene. Now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to make a function that does pixel to grid. And for this we need to know a, uh, we'll just call this a pixel x and pixel y. And this is going to take a um, xy coordinate from pixels and turn them into grid coordinates. And to do this, we're essentially undoing this. We're taking this little function here, and we're going to solve this for, um, uh, we want to solve it for column, because it, we're looking for what the column was, because that's part of the grid um, coordinate. So we're going to say var new x is equal to, and we're going to have to first subtract the x start, so pixel x minus x start, and then in parentheses, we need to divide this whole thing by offset. So divided by offset. And so if you imagine this being the pixel x here that we solved for, if we take this and subtract the x start and then divide by offset, what we're left with is column. And there we go. We're going to do the same thing for the y. So we're going to say var new y is equal to pixel y minus y start. But now this one needs to be divided by negative offset. And then we're going to return uh, vector to new x and new y. All right, so once we do our, our touch here, I'm going to register the grid position. I'm going to say my grid position is equal to um, pixel to grid. And I want to pass in uh, first touch dot x and first touch dot y. And then, just to prove it's working, I want to print grid position. All right. Cool. So now I'm going to go out of distraction free mode here so that I can see my little output there. And let's go into play. And now if I click somewhere, oh, hey, <laughs> I'm never calling get input. Good Lord. It's the second time I've made that mistake. All right. So my touch input here is never being called. So I need to call it. And I'm going to call it from the function process delta. Function process delta is called every frame. And delta is the time since last frame. So let me get rid of those lines there. I'll even get rid of the pass since I know what to do right away. And I'm just going to call touch input every frame. All right. So now if I go out of distraction free mode, save my scene, and let's hit play. Now if I click somewhere, uh, oh, hey, <laughs> I forgot one more thing. So because we could click somewhere that isn't directly on um, where the grid is, where I'm making my new X and my new Y, these need to be rounded. So I'm going to round the whole thing. We're not doing floor on this because we don't want like 1.6 to turn into 1. We want 1.6 to turn into 2. So I'm going to round the entire new X and new Y. Which is why just a second ago it gave me uh, 2.9 and 3.9. So I'm going to save my scene again and let's hit play. So here if I click right there 
it tells me that this is 3, 7. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it knows which piece we want. If I click here, I've got 2, 2. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. If I click here, 7, and then 1. All right, so I don't want these videos to get too long, so I'm going to split that now. And this is the starter. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to find that other position, and then we're going to use the grid to tell these two pieces to swap places. And we're going to cover that next time. So um, if you learned anything new, feel free to give me a like, or you can just like it otherwise. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below. Um, you can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post a new video. You can join my Discord. And yeah, I hope everybody's having a wonderful day.